Hello everyone. Today, we will talk about 15 different ways to get your US green card. The first few types of green cards that we will talk about are family-based green cards. First up is the green card through marriage. If you're in a real marriage with a US citizen or a permanent resident, you can apply for a green card based on that. When you got married, you both must have planned to live together genuinely. You can't just get married for the sake of getting a green card. That's the first option. Next, let's talk about the fiancé visa. This visa is for when you're engaged to someone who's not in the US. You apply for a special visa so your fiancé can come to the US. Once they're here, you get married, and then they can apply for their green card. That's how the fiancé visa works. Now, besides those two choices, let's look at other ways to get a green card based on family connections. The first two options were about marriages, but there are other family relationships that can also qualify. For example, if you're the parent of a US citizen who's over 21, or if you're the child of a US citizen or a permanent resident, or even if you're the sibling of a US citizen, you might be able to apply for a green card. So those are the family-based choices. Now, let's talk about green card options that are based on employment instead of family ties. One common one is the employer-sponsored green card. Here's how it works. When a US employer wants to hire someone from another country, they can offer them a job and then apply for a green card for that person. But there are rules. The employer has to prove they tried to find an American worker for the job first and couldn't. They also have to pay the foreign worker at least as much as they would pay an American worker for the same job. This is to make sure foreign workers aren't paid less. There are two types of employer-sponsored green cards, EB-2 and EB-3. EB-2 is for jobs that need higher qualifications, like advanced degrees. EB-3 is for jobs that don't need as much education or training, like basic labor. Which category you qualify for depends on your job. So that's one way to get a green card through employer sponsorship. Now, let's discuss something different. We've covered options based on family ties and jobs. Now, I want to talk about two ways to get a green card on your own, without someone else sponsoring you. It's called self-petition. The first option is EB1A, which is for people with extraordinary abilities. If someone is the best in their field in areas like science, business, education, or sports, and they can prove it with awards, high pay, publications, and so on, they can apply for a green card on their own, without needing a job offer or marriage. The second option is EB2 National Interest Waiver. This is for people who will benefit the whole country by working in the US. It's in the country's best interest for them to come here and they can get a green card without a job offer. They need to prove that what they'll do in the US is important for the country and that they're capable of succeeding in it. Remember when we discussed green cards sponsored by employers? We mentioned EB3 and EB2, which usually need a job offer from a US company. But EB2 National Interest Waiver is different. It's a special part of EB2 that doesn't need a job offer. If you are liking this video so far, please hit that like button. It means a lot. Now, let's talk about another green card option called EB5. This one is for investors. Here's how it works. If someone invests a lot of money in the US and creates jobs for American workers, they can get a green card. Right now, they need to invest at least $900,000. By doing this and helping the US economy, they, their spouse, and their unmarried children under 21 can get green cards. So that's the EB-5 investor visa. We've covered family, employment, self-petition, and investment options, but there's more to explore. Let's keep going. Now, let's look at two more green card options that you might not know about. The first one is called EB-1B. It's for exceptional professors and researchers. If someone is coming to the US to work as a professor or researcher and they can prove they're outstanding by showing awards, published work, citations, and other achievements, they can get a green card. So that's EB-1B. Now, let's talk about another category called EB-1C. This one is for managers or executives who work for companies in different countries. Here's how it works. If someone is working as a manager or executive for a company in another country and they've been doing that for at least a year full-time, they can transfer to a related company in the US under EB-1C. So, 
In simple terms, EB1C is a green card option for managers or executives who want to move from a foreign company to a related one in the US. Let's move forward. You might think we've covered everything already. So far, we've talked about 10 different ways to get your green card, and we still have 5 more to discuss. Let's keep going. The next option I want to tell you about is called the diversity visa. You might have heard of it as the diversity visa lottery. The US government wants America to be a diverse place with people from all kinds of backgrounds. So, they set aside some green cards for people from countries that aren't well represented in the US population. If you're from one of those countries, you can enter a special lottery. If you win, you can apply for a green card to come to the United States. That's the diversity visa. So, that's one way. Another way to get a green card is for people who have suffered abuse. This option is called VAWA, which stands for the Violence Against Women Act. It's for both men and women. It's for people who have been abused by a US citizen or a lawful permanent resident they were married to. There are different groups of people who can qualify for VAWA. You can be married to someone who abused you and they should be a US citizen or a permanent resident. A child of an abusive citizen or permanent resident can also apply for VAWA, and so can the parent of an abusive US citizen. To qualify for VAWA, you have to prove that you were in that relationship, like marriage, and that you suffered abuse. VAWA is a special law that lets victims of abuse apply for their green card without needing help from the abusive person. Alright, we're almost finished. We have three more choices to cover, and we'll go through them. Next up is the T visa. This one is for people who have been victims of human trafficking. It's a special option for those who have been affected by human trafficking. Next up is the U visa. This visa is for people who have faced physical or mental abuse while in the United States. Again, that's the U visa. Lastly, there's the EB4 visa. This visa has various subcategories, but one of the main ones is for certain religious workers. Basically, if you have a job offer to work for a religious organization, you might qualify for EB4. In this video, we've covered different ways to obtain your US green card. From family-based options like marriage and family connections to employment-based avenues such as employer sponsorship and self-petition options like EB1A and EB2 National Interest Waiver. We've also delved into special programs like the Diversity Visa and VAWA for victims of abuse. Whether you're looking for immigration opportunities through investment, exceptional skills, or unique circumstances, this video has got you covered. If you want to know whether you should keep green card or should apply for US passport after qualifying for citizenship, here is a detailed video of major comparison of green card with US passport and which one might be better for you. Do watch it.